one. Welcome to the show. I'm Matt Davidson. We got LL. Hey, y'all. We got Mark Henry. What's going on, people? We got the newest member of our guest party, Nick Harris. Hey, what's going on? And we have Marquez Beeson, the dog, the guy, the legend. Here he is. What's up, what's up, what's up? What's up, (laughs) baby? All right. So, once again, we just want to say, presented by 24-7 Sports, presented by the old coach, and we are all owned by CBS Sports. Give a shout-out to them. Okay, now, Grumpy Cuts. Make sure you guys can go get your hair cut by Grumpy Cuts. He is the guy to get your hair cut by in the DFW. He is one of our sponsors. Shout-out to Grumpy the Barber. And Mark Henry, take it away. All right, Marquez, I appreciate you joining us tonight. First, I just want to say congratulations. That's a great look. I'm really looking forward to seeing you at Duncanville on the field. Uh, just talk about your excitement in playing for Duncanville because you guys always have a tough schedule and play the top competition in Texas. Well, really, uh, like you said, I'm just anxious to play. Uh, just really just really excited to see what 6 Day football is about. Uh, my team, we've been preparing uh, this off season, uh, working real hard, going through these uh, these hot days in Texas, just to uh, go up against somebody else. Uh, that's gonna be a sight to see, cause I know we're gonna come prepared. Oh uh, man, I can't wait to see it. We're gonna be there live at five in some of these games. Uh, Marquez, also talk about. Let's talk a little bit about the recruitment process. Uh, we know you committed to Illinois, but talk about some of the schools that were interested in to you. Uh, and also, just to let everybody know, some people are, we're, this is what we do here is recruiting, high school football, and, and some of the challenges is to be wanted by so many schools and just the recruiting process in general. How was it for you? Well, at first it was great uh, just to get, like, all the notoriety for my hard work and dedication to the sport of football. And uh, then it got trying, like, it got tiring. Uh, like, folks are calling every night. I want to text you and all that. We have school and um, school and practice. But overall, it was a great experience to go through. And I wish, like, I wish everybody could go through that process because it was an amazing feeling. And uh, it was just great. All right, and last question, and I'll toss it back to Matt. Uh, some of your personal goals this year that you're looking forward to this year in 2018 and some of your team goals that you've set. Well, really, I just want to be – the best corner in 2019. Um, I want to be a lockdown corner for my team. Don't give them no touchdowns, don't allow no catches. And as a team goal, really the main goal is just to win state. That's everybody goal. And uh, we've been working hard to prepare for that. So that's just the main goal is to win state. Yeah, that's a, that's a great goal to have. And that's that's uh, something that I think is definitely attainable for Duncanville. You guys are loaded with talent. I've been over there multiple times. I know a lot of people over there. Got my guy Paco Nakia Brown over there. I uh, got JJ yeah. at quarterback. Yeah, I got yeah, I got Trayshawn Devons at corner. I mean, I got Stacy Brown. Yeah. These are my dogs. You know, Chris Thompson, yeah. all my dogs. Uh, Demar Jackson, DJ, those are my dogs. And um, yeah. so I'm very happy about what you guys got going on because I was one of the first guys in the media about two and a half years ago when it was Jalen Nelson and Trey Siggers and. Marcus Mosley Jr. and all these guys were coming up on the scene. Terrence Newman, you know, I was one of the first guys in the media to start showing them love before anybody came to Duncanville, went back when Coach Samples first got there. And I built that relationship, and I love you guys over there. But right now, I'm going to toss it over to Nick Harris and let Nick Harris get a, get a couple of few questions at you, and then we'll talk about your life story. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, what's going on, Marquez? How's it going? It's going good. What the hell? Oh, pretty good. I want you to touch on uh, your cousin. You know, he'll be transferring with you. You said uh, y'all kind of grew up together, so kind of touch on that a little bit. Really, my cousin Zariah, uh, we've been going. We grew up together. I've been playing him since I was nine. Uh, we got a tight relationship. We love each other to death. But one thing we're going to do, we're we going to compete with each other. Um, He's a great talent, about 6'2", 185, strong hands, fast and aggressive. Um, I'm trying to get him to come to college with me, but uh, he's going to be a a dominant factor this year for our team and a big playmaker. Yeah, he's a big recruit that a lot of schools are looking at in 2020. Uh, kind of talk about the recruitment process for him compared to you. How different has it been for him since he's a year be- year after you're going to be out? 
Uh, how has it kind of been different for him, and what's been kind of the same? Well, really, uh, just all the coaches trying to hit him up. Um, that's the same, but what's different, um, he has someone like that has been through the process and can like give him hints on things and and whatnot, and like just talk just talk about the whole process and like don't get overwhelmed by it. Because some people can, some people can get get overwhelmed by all the attention, but uh, he saved me. Hello. Mellow about the yeah, for sure. For sure. And then speaking of coaches, let's throw it back to the present. You know, going to Duncanville, Reginald Samples, very respected name around not only the DFW area, but all of Texas. Kind of talk about your interaction with Coach Samples over the past couple of weeks and uh, in the transfer. Uh, he said y'all are going to be good ads. Y'all are going to add some good speed on the field. Um, what do you have to say about him? Uh, coach Samples is a great coach. Um, you know what he's talking about. He's an offensive minded coach and a defensive minded coach. Um, he has great coaches on the staff to, to help the players out. Um, he uses his players very well. So I'll be playing multiple positions. Um, and he gets his athletes the ball. And he's a great man, a great father figure. And uh, he wants his, his football players to be men and not just football players. Right. What's kind of like the fight and mentality that's going on around that Panther locker room right now? Uh, coming up on a couple weeks before – or about a week before the season starts, they had a really good season last year opened a lot of people's eyes and like Matt said I, I remember when Matt was saying that they were going to make it big last year I was like all right Matt we'll see <laughs> and then <laughs> Duncanville actually did actually Duncanville actually did what they said they would so what's the mentality this year you know they're no longer the the underdog no one's looking at so what's it been like everybody we got a target on our back everybody's trying to uh trying to come at us but the, the mentality in the locker room is to eat kill and like just go out and dominate every year every single week when it starts in practice. Our practices be very intense, very physical, and uh, that's how you get to say the better, by practicing hard, by going hard in practice. And come game day, we're going to prepare for anything and everything. Yeah, for sure. And then talk about the moves from the move from TAPS to UIL and how do you think the competition will vary? I know a couple of uh, different players around the DFW area have made the jump from TAPS to 6A. Uh, in the past couple of years, I went to Rockwall Heath. We had a quarterback, Garrett Cody. He made that jump last year and moved on to 6A. Uh, he had a little bit of difficulties in the first couple of weeks, but then settled in and grooved. Do you expect to have a little bit of a transition period in that, those first couple of weeks, or how are you expecting to jump into 6A football? I'm really expecting to take it over. Like, I'm really just going to shock 6A. Going to shock 6A. Going to be going to shock everybody. And we're just going like, to just tee up, basically, um, because – I know how much hard work I put in. I know how much hard work Dunville has put in. And uh, we're just going to come here ready. And then last question for you. We'll kind of touch on track a little bit. Last year you did really well at the 6A state meet and taps. Uh, do you have some goals set for UIL? Or are you uh, planning on continuing to participate in track this year? Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to win UIL. Probably trying to win like a, a 10 or 9, something like that. Uh, just trying to be great at everything I do. That's good. Now I'll throw it on back to Matt. Marquez, we're very happy to have you. Just wanted to tell you uh, congratulations on all your accomplishments so far in your career in the high school level. But I think you know what time it is. It's time to eat this year. Um, but let's let's go back in time. Um, let's go back to, to growing up as a child. Um, let's talk about growing up uh, in the elementary level and what your life was like at those stages in your life up to middle school and then take us up to high school? Well, to start off, I didn't really have like a, a good good upbringing. Uh, my father was in and out of jail. My mom abused drugs and so I left me and my two other brothers to fend for ourselves and try to like just make it on our own. Um, but fast forward until I was around nine, a drastic, like something really bad happened to my mother and my uncle had came into my life. And um, I can say this, without my uncle, I really don't know where I'd be right now because he really changed me and motivated me to become a better person and a better man and not follow the same footsteps as my father. So when I was nine, I moved with him. And um, just going to middle school, um, I didn't really care about school because like, I didn't feel like I had anything in this world. I didn't feel loved in this world. But as time 
time went on, my uncle showed me that I cared in this world, and like he actually loved me. And um, so that's when I really started getting into football. Like, really started focusing about football and trying to make it my life. And then just going into high school my freshman year, but my uncle really instilled me hard work, hard work and dedication, and just love what you do. And I take that with me now. And really going through the recruiting process at first, it was difficult because I didn't really didn't see like all the attention from from the jump. But that just made me even even more hungrier and more willing to grind. So um, I say after my freshman year, that whole summer, I just worked with my uncle and my cousin, just trying to get better, get better, get better, get better. And then my sophomore year, that's when everything like just grew up for me, like the the offers, the stars. All the notoriety, that just that stuff came from hard work. And I can honestly say, say, without hard work, I don't know where I'd be. Without God, my life would be um, probably bad right now. Yeah, talk talk a little bit more about your uncle and what kind of man that he is, and uh, talk about your cousin and the influence that they've been been uh, been there for you. Well, Mom was a police officer. He's been a police officer about. 17 to 20 years right now. Um, he's a great man. He loves his family. He's a moral guy, a religious guy. Um, him and my aunt, they played a huge role in my life. They both played different parts. Uncle was more disciplinary type and uh, more of um, the hard work kind of guy. And then my aunt, she just like showed a lot of love to me and showed me like showed me how to love others, how to love myself. And um, my cousin is growing up with another another sibling was good because we can relate to each other. And when I was done, he picked me up. When he was done, I picked him up. And we just worked hard with each other and uh, just grew together as people. Yeah, you weren't lying. You said this might bring tears to my eyes. Dude, I'm, I'm feeling pretty emotional right now. This is really touching me. And... Um, <laughs> Yeah, um, you're you're really hitting home because my father's a police officer, so I, I know how it is. Um, I grew up not knowing if my dad was going to come home, and I know your uncle is like your father figure, and you you don't know if he's going to yeah. come home that night, you know. And um, yeah, so just talk about where you started as a freshman in high school, and um, talk about where you're at right now. Talk about you know the past three years and what it's been like for you on the football field and the challenges that you face. Um, at your high school and then at what it was like playing at Bishop Dunn? Well, my freshman year, I played receiver at Bishop Dunn. And I came into a, a team that had just won state, so the guys were like real mature, real, real advanced in the football. And um, they just brought me in with love. I didn't see the field that much my freshman year, because like I said, we had a lot of older guys. But um, just worked hard to practice, just perfecting my craft and trying to get better. But when I did touch the field, I just tried to make plays. Uh, and then my sophomore year, uh, that's when I started. And then just worked hard, worked hard. Had a good season, but didn't, but didn't finish how I wanted to. Um, we lost to State. I got hurt uh, the week before State. So I couldn't play in the State game. And then my junior year, we made it to the, the, the second round. We lost to St. Pius. But it was a great season. Like, the team bonded together. And in life. I can really say that those guys are my brothers and we'll have a bond forever. And then like making the transition from Bishop Dunn to Duncanville, it has been a good transition so far. The players have brought me in with love and like they showed me the Duncanville way, showed me how they work, showed me how to prepare. And, and um we have a real big chance to win the state and and just going into the season, we like we ready. We real hungry and ready just to play. Um uh, just to prove, prove to people why we have this big ranking and why we are like who we say we are. Oh, yeah. Trust me. I know who you guys are. I'm very happy and very proud to be able to be the one of the guys that have seen you guys at Duncanville grow from the bottom, and here you are. Um, talk about the way that guys have embraced you at Duncanville, and uh, I just want to say shout-out to Kerry and Howard. That's one of my guys, too. Um, but, yeah. 
Yeah, that's my guy. Um, talk about talk about the relationship that you've had with these guys coming over and the difference between uh, playing at Bishop Dunn and playing at Taps compared to coming to a 6A school. Uh, well, I knew some of the guys from Seminole Family Dunn, like Karrion, uh Stacy, Chris, Trayshawn. So I knew some of the guys already, but when I made the transition, they just made me feel like family, like they welcomed me the first day. And, uh, just like, just treat me like family and uh, really just working hard together. And the, the transition from TAPS to 6A, um, I don't really, I don't even say that's a big difference. It's just, Douglas Bay has a lot of players, so we get a lot of reps and like, and it's like physical and it's hot and it's just going, going rep after rep after rep and competing every day in practice. Talk about some things that people don't know uh, about you that are your hobbies. What kind <clears> of things do you enjoy to do in your spare time that people might not know? Me, well, I like to listen to music a lot and uh, play video games. Like, I like Madden 2K, and I like to just chill at the house. So I'm a real, like, real chill guy. And there's nothing wrong with that. I like to chill at the house. I like to play Madden in 2K, too, so we got a lot in common. Um talk about Illinois um, talk about going up there talking about the environment talk about the coaching staff tell us because we've never been to Illinois so kind of paint us the picture of what it's like up there first of all it's cold it's real cold <laughs> I got to get used to that right now but overall the coaches are great um, the players are great everybody just look at the record they see two and ten but they don't realize that they played more than 25 freshmen so coming into this year our freshmen while last year's freshmen gonna be more experienced than than any other body in the country so we should have a breakout year the fans are great um they show a lot of love no matter what um getting back on the coaches they they really they really 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 look into the person you are and not just how you do on the field like coach Stoker coach Lovey Smith they all like wanted to give me they wanted to know me on a personal level just to see, well, not just to see what kind of football player I was, what kind of person I was. And I really like that about the coaches. Do you think that you clicked with Coach Lovey Smith because he's from Texas? And do you think that um, do you think that the future is bright for Illinois? And just talk about some of the other incoming freshmen that we might not know about that are going to Illinois with you. Um, yeah, I clicked on I clicked on because because he's from Texas, but also because he's a good guy, he's a good man, and uh, he loves football, and I love football. And some some of the 2019 guys, they've got coming in, uh, Fabian McCray, um, Isaiah Washington. Um, we got one from, from Plano, Kyron Cumby, and then we got another one from Chicago, Justin Thomas. Thompson. So we got a pretty good class right now. And we got another one from St. Louis, Bryce Childress. We have a lot of good guys. And Casey Washington from Texas. So we got, so we got a good school class. And we should be straight going into our first year. So so I'll ask this question because I feel like me and you are pretty cool now with each other. Um, you have so many big offers from so many other schools. Um, what really stuck out for Illinois to get you? Because it seems like they got a really great kid, which is you, and a really great player, which is also you, of course. But there's others, other big offers that you have. Like, what, what made you just say, okay, Illinois, that's the place? The connection I have with them, like, 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 like every other school, I feel like I had to change who I was, like, just to talk to the coaches or go visit the school. But when I went to Illinois, I feel like I could be myself around the coaches and like how I normally am and uh, the coaches embraced me the players embraced me but that was really like the big thing I could be myself around everybody well, that's pretty awesome right now man I just want to tell you man I'm so thankful that you came on this show with us and we're not done yet but we're going to let LL have a crack at you and then we're going to let you do your shout outs alright hey Marquez um, thanks so much. Doing? I'm doing great. Thank you. This is I, I thank you so much for coming on here and sharing your story. This is just amazing. And 
Uh, I'm so glad we're getting the chance to let other people know who you are and um, what all you have overcome. And I had to laugh when you said that it's cold up in Champaign. Uh, it is. Uh, I married a guy from Illinois, so I have been up there several times to the campus, and it's it's beautiful, but yeah, it can get cold up there. <laughs> So, yeah, well, I'm just so excited because we don't usually have a lot of players from Texas to come up to Illinois. So um, I think you covered it pretty well, but I'm also thinking, wow, you're going to face some amazing opponents in the Big Ten, aren't you? Yep. I got a, I got a friend. He committed to, uh, to Ohio State, Jerry Wilson. Great competition right there. And I got some other friends that committed to Michigan. So, and my uh, my old teammate, Damian Daniels, he goes to Nebraska. So, that's a lot of competition in the Big Ten and friendly rivalries. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So, those are some of the best games of the season are played there in the Big Ten. So, that's exciting for you. And um, – I also saw the state game where y'all lost just at the very last second with Bishop Dunn a couple of years ago. And um, that was still one of the most amazing games I've ever seen. That was such a defensive battle. And it's a shame you weren't out there. It could have been, it could have gone a very different way. That was a tough game. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm excited though, because you're really going to have a great shot at, state again here with duncanville so that's just fantastic really great opportunity for you and yeah. yeah so we will look forward to seeing you this fall so matt i'll go ahead and throw it back to you yeah so i, I was going to tell you real quick marquez i got some of my boys up at michigan um i know you've heard of them the green brothers the twins german and jamon and they're they're playing at michigan and that's going to be a good challenge. And I know you're an athlete. Is Illinois going to let you play offense and defense? I'm just curious. Yes, sir. That's the plan. They said I can play offense and defense. Man, that's pretty sweet, dude. Uh, you're going to get to go both ways. Not a lot of players get to go both ways coming into college. And I can see why you chose Illinois because, uh, you know, a school being able to let somebody do that is almost the equivalent of letting someone play two sports, in my opinion. And uh, that means oh, a lot. I'm going to pay Illinois as well. Well, I think I am. I think. I'm going to try that at first, so I think. You, so you're going you're gonna to try to run track there too? Yes, sir. I talked Man, to the coach already. He said it's cool, but I'm going to see how it like. See how it works with my schedule. Yeah, that's pretty sweet, man. You know, we've had a lot of college players come on and check in with us from college, like Spencer Trussell at K-State, Cameron cam jones over at nebraska you know we've had we've had eric sutton at smu check in with us we've had greg eisworth over at iowa state so we plan to have you come back on the show once you go to illinois and we're going to check in with you again um but at this time i'm going to give you a chance to give a shout out to whoever you want to give a shout out to and tell people what your twitter is so they can follow you on twitter as well all right first shout out to my family archie beeson teacher beeson Zariah Beeson and Rashonda Beeson. That's my family. Second, second shout out goes to my Duncanville brother. Uh, let's get this state championship. And third, third shout out goes to my Dunn family. Uh, miss y'all. Go get the, go get state and uh, my BIA buddy. That's my football like my football clip. This hashtag BIA. So shout out to them. And my Twitter is at Easy Money Cash. That's E Z. M O N E Y Q U E Z, he's a money kid. Oh, and shout out to God. You can't forget God. Without no, him, call. Him. Hey, call God. I know that's a good saying at Duncanville. Call God. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, I'm a Christian. I, I I love I love people that are that are self sharing their fellowship. Uh, Nick Harris, I'm gonna give you a chance to give your final thoughts with Marquez. Yeah, Marquez. First off, yeah, thanks for coming on the show today. It's been great. Um. Also, I have one more question uh, about Coach Lovey Smith. Uh, he came from the NFL ranks a couple of years ago um, down to the college ranks, and he's starting to rebuild that program at Illinois. Uh, what are some things you've seen from him that you think uh, translate to the next level, you know, when four years from now, hopefully you're trying to make that jump? 
Uh, how do you think that's going to help in preparation for the next level as well, having a coach like that who coached in the NFL for so long? Really, um, from a defensive, from a defensive perspective, um, he coached in the NFL, so he knows what they're looking for. He knows the kind of coverages they run or like their lingo and, and how they call certain things. So that's really the big thing. Just um, just picking his brain on what the NFL looks for and um, like the lingo of the NFL. So basically, just picking his brain on how how I can become an NFL cornerback. Yeah, for sure. And he, you definitely have all the tools up there in Champaign uh, to get you ready for that. So, uh, and then bring it back to now. Uh, talk about Lancaster next week. You know, are you are already preparing uh, for that matchup? Uh, what are some things Coach Samples and you and the leaders on the team are trying to uh, get across before y'all hit the field at 7:30 next Friday night? Really, just go out and compete. I give it your all, and uh, work hard in practice because that's where it starts. Practice. If you don't have a good practice. Um, you're not going to play where you can't just flip a switch and be like, oh, I'm going to turn around right now. Now you got to have to prepare the first four days, and then on the fifth day, you got to come out and show you what, show what you be doing in practice. So really just just practice hard and come out and play hard. Yeah, that sounds good. And I'll be, I'll be sure to keep an eye on you all this season, and hopefully I'll be able to make it out to Duncanville, see you all in a game, hopefully in the playoffs as well. Uh, I wish you luck this season. I wish the Panthers good luck this season. And I hope to see you all at AT AT&T Stadium in December uh, when all the big lights are on. And uh, thank you once again for coming up on the show. And I'll go ahead and throw it back to Matt. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Nothing but love for Marquez. Mark Henry, final thoughts with Marquez. Mark Henry, come on in. Hey, Marquez, man, I wish you the best of luck. I love this story, man. Uh, I'm originally from Houston, Texas, and I've – with the school with kids, play ball myself with kids to have a similar type of story. And it's always the work ethic and the belief in yourself. And it takes a village to raise a child. And your village is strong and that's what got you to where you are now, man. I, I, I Kudos to you for keeping your head strong and kudos to your family. Shout out to your uncle, your cousin, and your whole supporting family that, that has helped you get to this level. And then I do have another question for you. Since you guys are playing uh, Lancaster, talk about some of the receivers they got. They got a kid over there, Magic Rector. He's one of the top receivers in in the state yeah. and in the DFW area. Talk about uh, what you think about maybe matching up with Magic. That's my little bro. Uh, he quick, he shifty, he a dynamic, dynamic player. Uh, they get ball in his hands at any time. He's bound to make a play. Um, that's no him be a good good matchup for me. Uh, just work on my technique and go go up against a smaller shifty guy. Um, it'd be a good battle. All right, man. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing. We we definitely gonna be in the house with some of you guys' action this year. Stay healthy, man. And anytime you want to come on, just hit us up, man. Oh, for sure. Oh, and we got a scrimmage Friday at at Duncanville, so come out and watch. Uh, real quick, Marquez, who are you guys scrimmaging against on Friday so everybody can know? I'll let you, Mark. Man, talk about a team to play against in a scrimmage. That's a great way to get tested. Arlington Martin comes to play, and uh, yep. I know they're gonna. I know they're. I know they're gonna test you guys, which is good because you need to be tested. Man, shout out to Coach Samples. I was there when he broke the record for the most wins by any African American head coach in the history of UIL. I was there. I got to interview him in the center field. Uh, I'm going to be there. You know, I'm going to cover a lot of your games this year, and uh, I'm very happy that you're there. Um, it means a lot to me that big players like yourself trust trust to be able to go to a school that you live in the area of instead of just going to a private school. I know you've been going to TAP schools, but now you get to go to a public school, and uh, public schools are on the rise, and I think it's good for the public schools in the state of Texas and UIL that you're coming back to uh, play for a UIL school, and it makes me very happy. And um, I just want to say how happy I am that you joined us, and we're gonna have we're gonna have plenty of time to check in with you this season, and we might even bring you back, uh, you know, halfway through the season to see how you, how you're feeling about things, and just kind of check in with you if that's okay. That sounds good. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I just want you guys to understand that we've had probably one of the best interviews we've ever had on here, Marquez Beeson, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, Marquez Beeson.
Thanks for having me. Thanks, Marquez. You have a great rest of your night, brother, and we'll catch up with you soon. Me too. All right, take it easy. All right. All right, later. Yes, that was Marquez Beeson. And, guys, we have breaking news right now. Breaking news, Urban Meyer has been suspended for three games. I'm going to start it off with Nick Harris. Nick Harris, jump into this. Yeah, I just got that notification, too. I was hoping to beat you to it. Dang it, Matt. All right, so Urban Meyer suspended three games after uh, the investigation of the Ohio State assistant, the handling of the domestic violence case. Kind of a weird case all around. Uh, the NCAA and Ohio State's main focus was how much involvement did Ohio, uh, Urban Meyer have and covering up some of it. Uh, some of the details in this case were very oddball. It's definitely a weird case uh, in the eyes of an NCAA investigator and of an Ohio State investigator. Um, so he will be suspended for the first three games. <coughs> that includes the big matchup against TCU at AT&T Stadium on September 15th. So uh, Coach Gary Patterson will probably have a nice opportunity in week three to catch a top five win if Ohio State doesn't uh, lose before that. Um, so that's, that's definitely a big big news coming out of the uh, college football world today. That was what everybody was waiting for. I think they had been in deliberations for, geez, nearly six or seven hours now, and some of the fans had lawn chairs outside of the Ohio State Athletic Office waiting for a decision. Uh, so that's a big decision. And um, I know LL has some uh, points to talk about on this, so I'll go ahead and throw it over to her as well. Yeah, both of y'all got the jump on me. I was like, oh, oh. So. Uh, <laughs> Wait, hey, wait hey. Until she comes back, I'll kind of talk. Am I there? Can y'all hear me? My opinion on it. Matt? Um, L, you there? Hey, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, my goodness. Uh, go yeah, I, I just, oh, wow. I was so disappointed that both of y'all got the jump on me with this one. I wanted to just scream in the middle of the interview. But it was so great <laughs> having Marquez on. Um, Nick, you said it. This, this was just crazy all around. And it got nastier. Um... I think one of my favorite reactions was a tweet that I found and it said so um, it like basically covering up for domestic abuse is not as bad as marijuana got it but really more than anything I'm kind of impressed I'm surprised Ohio State even suspended him um, I was kind of thinking he was just going to be reinstated without any kind of suspension um, unfortunately there, it'll it'll still be it'll still be there you know it's still a part of history I guess if you will and because the media jumps so fast into these things I I don't think you ever really get the truth and I think that's probably been the most frustrating thing I have discovered overall whenever I look into any of these controversies so um who knows? I, I think it's a great chance for TCU, frankly, too. So I agree with you on that one, too, Nick. That could be a great opportunity for them. Um, yeah, <laughs> I think I'm still just kind of, I think I'm just still surprised. Uh, again, for those of you who don't know, I'm writing a book about what happened at Baylor. So I kind of I kind of have my antenna up for any of these kind of stories. So. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Awesome. Mark, Mark Henry, come on in. You got to talk about this because we talked about it a couple weeks ago when we first heard about the allegations and everything. Mark Henry, we got to hear your opinion. Well, a shout out to Ohio State for standing up and making a coach accountable for his actions, too. I mean, indirectly, he was involved, even though he didn't actually participate or abuse uh, his wife. But if he knew about it, you know. At this point, everything's been kind of butchered, and the facts are so loose and so out, blown out of proportion that, you know, we don't know what's true and what is true. But I think that Ohio State did make a, uh, a plea or did show some, uh, you know, some spine by going ahead and, then, hey, just so give the coach accountable because so many times often these players uh, are, are victimized. They don't get paid. I mean, there's a lot of things. These guys are making millions of dollars, and these kids uh, are being punished for their actions. So shout out to Ohio State for stepping up. I, I, I agree with that. And then to piggyback on what Nick said, hey, this is the time for the Horn Frogs to jump on that. The Horn Frogs need to stand up and, and, and get a top five win, like he said. But also, now for Ohio State, this could be the circle the wagons type thing that they need to rally against 
the rest of college football to me against the world thing that teams show, hey, they could go on a run. This could be the stamp that make them, uh, you know, a road to the national championship. So don't count Ohio State out. Sometimes distraction is good for a team. Yeah, man. Uh, I, sorry, I was texting Marquez back because he was telling us thanks for having him on the show. But, yeah, so my opinion on this is it could have been worse. Um, the, NCL, the NCAA could have gotten involved, um, but they didn't. And it seems like they're letting Ohio State kind of handle it on their own, which is okay. But, you know, I, I can't help but look back on Penn State and how they made them vacate the wins and tear down the statue. And I get it. It was a little bit different. It's not the same as domestic violence. But – a coach was still doing something without another coach knowing and urban Meyer was affected by this, just like Joe Paterno was. Um, it's going to be a blemish on his career. It's going to be a blemish on him, but being suspended three games compared to being fired. I'll take the three game suspension any day. If you ask me. Um, yeah. <laughs> right. So I'll take the three, yeah. I'll take the three game suspension. And I think people respect urban Meyer so much that they couldn't fire him because of how good he's done in his history and his track record and the fact that he turned it over to the person in charge, which was the athletic department above Ohio State. And he kind of washed his hands with it. Yeah, there was a lot of hoopla coming out about this guy and how Urban Meyer might have known about stuff that happened about four or five years ago when he got a DWI charge or not. I don't know. I know that the, the coach has already been fired. Um, that was on his staff that was domestically, you know, abusing his wife. And now she has divorced him and uh, they're going through that whole legal process and litigations. And it's just a mess for the husband and the wife. I don't know if they have children or not, but it was definitely a distraction. There is a player or well, there's a couple of players that are from this area that are playing at Ohio State that, you know, we like to keep up with Jeffrey Akuda from South Grand Prairie and then also Baron Browning from over at Kennedale. And, uh, you know, I was kind of wondering, and then Nick kind of talk about your, your, you might go do an interview with Garrett Wilson and he's committed to there. I mean, Ohio state, you want to talk about that? Exactly. Garrett Wilson, wide receiver from Lake Travis. He may, he, uh, opened some eyes at the state game last year. He had a couple of wild catches and he's a top recruit in the 2019 class. Uh, I haven't gotten a call back from coach Carter, um, but I'm hoping to get out to practice that Lake Travis either tomorrow or Friday. And uh, upon Coach Carter's approval, hope to get a statement from Garrett about the whole investigation and how that will affect his recruitment process. Um, but one thing I do want to touch about this whole case uh, that's kind of different, that kind of the side note from all of that is the guy who broke it, Brett McMurphy. He was let go by ESPN uh, a few a few months back whenever they had all of their layoffs, and he decided to just break this story on his own on Twitter, and it forced ESPN to bring him back on. Uh, and they have had him interviewed all week. Uh, he's, <laughs> he's been the one who's been first uh, with all of the uh, breaking news in this case. Uh, he was the one that first broke it. Um, and it's just, it's just great to see when a journalist's work is validated uh, in moments like this because uh, without this journalist's work, this uh, story probably would have gone um, hidden, as so many are probably uh, in the college football world anyway. <laughs> so uh, this is a, it's a great story on Brett McMurphy's side. Uh, sad it had to be at the hands of uh, the ex-assistant, Zach Smith's wife. Um, uh, she's still the victim in this case, so hopefully there's not too much too much blowback on her because, uh, you know, Ohio State fans can get pretty ruthless. So uh, uh, hopefully this case will die down once the suspension is over and uh, everyone can go back to living their normal lives at Ohio State except for Zach Smith. You know, um, let me jump in on that. Nick, that's a really good point um, that uh, there we – Everybody forgets the victim in this. And unfortunately, people also forget the coach's family in this. So I'm pleased for the Meyer family as well that um, I think it's I think it's pretty fair. It's a pretty decent punishment, but it's not firing. And I also agree he probably wasn't going to be fired anyway. But um, for Shelly, I um, not Shelly for um, Smith's wife, I really hope she can heal, that she can get better, and um, that other women will not be afraid to come forward. Because you're right, Nick, this isn't the only time something like this has ever happened. Um, so that would also be my plea to anybody who knows someone in a situation like this is to get help. And Matt, going back to NCAA, 
what happened with NCAA and Penn State. You and I have talked offline about this, too. They went so far with Penn State that they had to go back and take some, you know, kind of backtrack on some of that. And I really think that's why they have been so hesitant to get involved in anything big like uh, Baylor, this story, Michigan State, et cetera, because it just went, it, it blew up in their faces with Penn State, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, you look back on these things, and I feel bad for the people that went to school at Penn State. I don't feel bad for anybody else at Penn State. I feel bad for the people that went to school there. They were fans. They went to school there. They cheered They cheered for all those national championships that they got back in the day, and then they wanted to take them away all because of a coach being selfish and wanting to be a sexual predator on children and on young men. And it's not the fans' fault. You know, don't take it away from the fans. That man is in jail. He's getting he's getting everything he deserves, Jerry Sandusky is. And, you know, there was a guy that used to work for ESPN that was an announcer, and that's what I do. I announce games. He was an announcer, and his name was coincidentally Jerry Sandusky. And after that, he could not go nowhere. I mean, his name, like, blackballed him. And that type of stuff is real, and it happens. And I just want to say, Nick Harris, I think we need you on this show like every time we do a podcast now because all of the information that you brought to the table – has qualified you to be the fourth member, and we don't need a guest no more. We need Nick Harris. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. That sounds good. When do y'all record recording on Wednesday night? Shoot, I yep. have nothing going on as always. Yep. <laughs> that yep. sounds great to me. I like it. I yeah, like it a lot. One, one more thing to touch on about Ohio State. You know, they're just coming off uh, a big scandal a few years back. Um, they were stripped of their national title after the tattoo scandal a few years ago. And then they were uh, suspended from postseason play a few wow. years ago as well. It was right. Urban Meyer's first season there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So they did. Yeah. They did and rise in that occasion. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. And they did rise in that occasion. I believe they were actually went undefeated in that season that they uh, um, that they were they couldn't make the postseason for. And in the AP poll, they were like number three all year, but it meant nothing at, in the grand scheme of things. Um, so this is another scandal. You know, Ohio State is just coming off the heels of that one a few years ago. Uh, they gotten some quality wins uh, on their belt, a national championship title, and uh, Zeke was over there with that third-string quarterback, Cardale Jones, in AT&T Stadium. Um, and so now they're going to have to deal with this, and it's going to be how are they going to recuperate come week four, uh, and everything hopes to get back to normal. Uh, you know, they're going to have to welcome yeah. in a new uh, offensive system this year. J.T. Barrett's out the door. Uh, they're going to have to figure out a uh, quarterback situation without Urban Meyer for the first three weeks. Uh, some holes on defense they're going to have to figure out in the first three weeks. But they have a good recruiting class. Uh, hopefully some of these freshmen can stand up, and uh, maybe a couple of them will start here in the next few weeks as well. Um, but once again, how, how it, Ohio State season will be defined by the first three weeks, and especially that game against TCU. Because TCU, is, is they're looking to be one of the better teams in Texas and the better teams in the Big 12 uh, come 2018. Yeah, I got to agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, hey, a quick shout-out. Quick shout out to TCU quarterback just named this week, former DeSoto State champion Sean Robinson. (laughs) There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you know what? And, Matt, I do want to end this on a positive. The thing that Urban Meyer did right, and let's, let's focus on that, he fired Zach Smith. So that is something that he did right in this whole situation. I want I want to end on a positive note with yeah, that. Uh, aim, amen to that, and I'll even double down. Um, so over over at TCU, Sean Robinson, you know, I got a chance to interview him a good amount of times. So I'm happy for him. I hope he, that he goes out and balls out. I hope, you know, this is going to sound bad for anybody from Ohio State that's listening, but I hope that TCU beats them. I'm, I'm not a fan of any Texas college schools, but I will be a fan of TCU whenever they play Ohio State. I went to high school out in Fresno, California. I am a Fresno State Bulldog fan. Of, you know, we're not good at all. So I have to kind of watch other. Carr. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. And we had uh, David Carr, his older brother. But, you know, yeah. that's neither here nor there. We had Ryan Matthews, too. But, hey, who's counting? Um, you know, we, we look at other schools, and we have to watch them be successful, like Alabama and, you know, all the big schools. Nick, you're down at Texas now, so that's pretty awesome for you. Um, I'm looking at all these schools right now, and I'm wondering who's going to do it. And, you know, we, we had a debate earlier about the Georgia Bulldogs in, in our group chat, and we also talked about I, – I think Alabama's got a good thing going on. Alabama has a quarterback controversy with Tua and uh, – what's his name? Jalen Hurts. 
and you know they're going at it and that's a good thing to have some open competition this this uh ncaa football season is going to be very intriguing and uh god this show has been so good it's just we're, we're up against time and uh mark i'm gonna let you have some closing thoughts real quick hey tomorrow or excuse me friday me and Matt, we're going over to Brewer versus Justin Northwest scrimmage, uh, 7 o'clock. And next week, uh, my Friday game is going to be Cedar Hill and John Tyler. I think this is one of the biggest matchups in Texas. you got two of the most storied programs in Texas. Uh, John Tyler's where Earl Campbell went to school also. And uh, Cedar Hill has won multiple state championships. So, that's going to be a big one. And then I will let you guys know next week, Thursdays this year, is going to be all about Fort Worth ISD. So I'm going to do a Thursday game for Fort Worth ISD. And then Friday, it'll just be one of the biggest games of the year uh, each each week. But Thursday will be dedicated to Tarrant County. And we need to show Fort Worth ISD some love. These guys don't get a lot of love. Uh, I would say in the DFW area as a whole. I mean, Fort Worth is kind of slept on. So... I'm going to take it under the old coach's wing, and we're going to make sure we spotlight Fort Worth on Thursday nights. So uh, other than that, follow me on Twitter, on the Mark Sports, or Mark Hinton, at Mark Hinton 44 on Instagram also. And shout-out to the old coach. Shout-out to Matt. Shout-out to Nick, Nick Walters, LL. Man, I just want to show everybody love. And keep following us at Old Coach and Texas, Top Texas Prospects, baby. We got it all. Man, I couldn't have said it any better. Uh, Nick Harris, final thoughts. Yeah, so uh, this week I'm taking a break from scrimmages. I'm focusing on getting out to some practices out here in the Austin area, trying to get out to Lake Travis, Westlake, Austin McCallum, and Austin Anderson before I go uh, and see them this year. Uh, next Thursday night I will be at Austin McCallum and Austin Anderson. Uh, McCallum's coming off their best season in school history. They uh, state semifinalists and got beat by College Station, who ended up winning that 5A Division II state title. Um, so I'm excited to see that one. And then in the Friday game, y'all chose it on the poll on the old coach Twitter, uh, Mesquite Horn at Allen. I believe that Mesquite Horn actually has a chance in this game. They're bringing back uh, uh, athletic QB Jermaine Givens. He was District 11 6 a player of the year last year as a junior, uh, and that was in a district with a lot of competition and a lot of solid players. Uh, so he's looking for more. He's committed to uh, uh, Monroe, I believe. Don't check me out. Lamar. Lamar, that's it. He's committed to Lamar. And uh, so Mesquite Horn, they've got some weapons out there for sure. And, of course, Allen brings back Grant Tisdell, their star QB from last year's state championship team. I'll be at that one Friday night. And then Saturday I'll be right back at Eagle Stadium for Frisco Heritage and Lovejoy. So uh, I got a triple triple play going on next week, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And just some things going on at the old coach. Uh, I can kind of speak on some of this. Um, Nick Walters, our editor-in-chief, and myself, associate editor, uh, we've been working on some big things in the past couple weeks. And uh, – uh, hopefully we're trying to get a studio show going and um, that we can have shown uh, every week for about uh, 10, 15 minutes that you can see uh, uh, on YouTube or whatever's easier for you, uh, the viewer. And then um, also big, big, big thing for us. If you're a business out there looking to get your name out across the state of Texas, please reach out to anybody on the old coach website, uh, the old coach Twitters. Uh, we're all waiting for you uh, to bring in some uh, revenue and have your name shown. Uh, on all the stuff that we do. Uh, one thing we're looking to push this season is be one of the biggest uh, digitally um, uh, websites out there and have the most video that we, we were going to show video down your throat <clears> so you can be ready for Saturday morning when you wake up and having your cup of coffee and uh, trying to see what happened in the Texas high school football world the night before. Uh, and so other than that, uh, that's all that's going on. We're about a week away from the Texas high school football season. Man, I've never been more excited for a season got a great crew of guys we're working with this year and there's a lot of great teams out there uh that are looking to make an impact so we're hoping to get all of that covered for you and uh have mm. this be the best season for the old coach and for the fans awesome i love it i love it ll come in real quick and then i'll give my final thoughts okay great so nick great to have you tonight and i want to shout out to all the old coach staff and nick harris nick walters of course they're doing a wonderful job with old coach they're Longhorns. So um, <laughs> that's where my UT bias comes out. All right. So for, <laughs> for next week, <laughs> come next week, I will see a little bit of TAP's big game for the week, which will be Bishop Lynch and Trinity Christian Cedar Hill. 
and then I will be driving down to Houston and to catch some college action. I will be in the booth for the Advocare Texas kickoff featuring Texas Tech and Ole Miss. So I will talk to y'all a little bit about that. We had Coach Longo on um, earlier this summer with um, Ole Miss. So I'm looking forward to seeing what they've got and um, watching what should be a really good game. So I will be around covering taps. I'll cover college here and there. And most of all, I'll get to have fun with y'all on Wednesday nights here on this podcast. You can follow me at L-L-M-A-J-E-R. Thanks so much for listening. All right, Matt. Yeah, so right now, don't forget, we are presented by Grumpy the Barber, Grumpy Cuts. You can give him a phone call at 682-331-2244. He is our sponsor. Raul is his name, a.k.a. Grumpy the Barber. Go get your hair cut by the best in DFW. Once again, 682-331-2244. That is our sponsor. And I just want to say, hey, we've had a great week. We're going to keep doing what we're doing. I will be at the South Lake and South Grand Prairie game next Thursday. And then from pole voting, I will be at the Keller Fossil Ridge. We had on Jalen Hurst last week. I know you guys remember him. He plays for Keller Fossil Ridge. We'll be at the Keller Fossil Ridge game and the Flower Mound Jags. I know a lot of people don't really know about Flower Mound, so I'm going to go out there and find out what it's like to be in their atmosphere and see what it's like. I'm going to be with my camera guy, Jeter. Jeter is a great guy. He's a great video editor. And uh, he's very new, and uh, he's going to be showing you guys what he's got. And uh, I just want to tell everybody thank you. We hope to have Nick Harris on for the remainder of the season. And, you know, in the future, we know he's going to have a studio show on. But this went so well, we just have to have him back. So um, <laughs> I appreciate it, guys. Yeah, right. that's, that's just how we feel. Um, and so I'm signing out. You can follow me at M-D-Z-G-O, go. And we're going to keep it rocking and rolling.